Hello, so welcome to our fourth episode. Uh, we have a very special guest. Uh, we just did a signing down here. So, uh, Mr. Jerry Kraft. His uh, new book, New Kid, uh, up for a industry award, Harvey Award, uh, Harvey award yep. in two weeks, right? Yep, the, two weeks. The, New York Comic Con. Yep. Unbelievable. 250 pages. Yep, 250 pages. Yeah. It, took, it, it was literally drawing almost seven days a week. I signed my contract in January 2017, right. Right. and I drew like from 9 a.m. till 2 a.m. almost every day. Wow. From January 2017, I finished February of 2018. And almost everything you, in the book is by you, right? Yeah, I drew it all, I wrote it all, I did the word balloons, the yeah. lettering. Um, I did have a colors, okay. but I did some of the coloring, but wow. Uh, yeah. That's a lot of work. That was a lot of work. So yeah. it's like, if you break it down by page, it's probably less than minimum wage. I don't want to even think about that, because <laughs> I won't want to do the sequel. Right. <laughs> So, uh, so can you tell us a little about it? Yep, so it's loosely based on my life and then also uh, some of the other details are from my son's lives. I have two right. sons. Right. And I was born in Harlem. I grew up in the Washington Heights section of New York City, which is right next to Harlem. Right. And I always wanted to be an artist. And I, I always had like smaller schools that I went to, primarily okay. African-American. Okay. 25 kids in the class, yeah. of which maybe 23 were African-American. Oh. No, and that was my entire seventh grade class, right. entire eighth grade class. So I wanted to go to art school. Mm -hmm. So art design and music and art. I took the test and I passed, but my parents were like, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think that you or anyone could really make a living as an artist. Because right. at that term, the only, yeah. at that time, the only term they ever heard with yeah. artists was starving, like sure. starving right. artists. Yeah. So, um, That's still true today? <laughs> yeah, I think we eat a little better yeah. now. But um, yeah, starving artists, that was the big thing. So they were like, so they're going to this art school, we're sending you to this academic school right. uh, in Riverdale, mm -hmm. Paul Fieldston. Mm -hmm. And so now each day I go from my humble abode in Washington Heights, mm -hmm. take the 100 bus, get off the BX-10, mm -hmm. and now I'm in Riverdale, Wow. you know, with RT and Jughead and <laughs> Veronica. And now I go from one of 25 black kids in the class yeah. and now 10 black kids okay. in a class of 110 kids oh okay that's not so bad though yeah it is yeah i mean these are literally like the first white kids i've ever been around okay. so to be like 110 and there's 10 african-american kids yeah but then also i would say like a large majority of the african-american kids mm -hmm. there had been in that field of program their whole lives. Oh, okay. So gotcha. we were not relatable right, at right, all. You right, know what right. I mean? So you were like the country boy coming into the city. Right? I was the city boy going into the country. Oh, it, was, it was like that. that. Okay. You know. But it was just a different thing. Like I was Coney Island and they were Fire Island. You know, oh, you know gotcha. what I mean? Yeah. I was Toys R Us, they were FAO Schwartz. Oh man. You know? That's... So um, most of my friends were like, you know, the African American kids from the Bronx. Yeah or like the um, middle class white kids from the Bronx and stuff like that. So I put a lot of that in there of just trying to kind of navigate the new culture. Mm -hmm. um, so fish out of water, mm -hmm. but also, you know, when you leave your neighborhood, right. and it's like, oh, hey, private school, you think you're all that now. So <laughs> there's some kickback oh. with the French front as well. Really? Oh yeah, so they know about it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it was like I was like sneaking, you know, right, like, right. hey, where are you going? Yeah. Feels it. Yeah. Oh, you think you're all that? Oh, now? You know, wow. how can you talk like that? How can you do Really? This? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's interesting. So, but you never got to a physical level, right? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, it was like teasing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's what friends do though. Not bullying. Right. You know, yeah. but then the kids I didn't know so well, mm -hmm. you know, there's always like, Oh, he's talking all proper and everything. <laughs> yeah, because I want to graduate. Right. I want to, right. you know. Um, so there is a level, I yeah. think, that our community, a lot of times, yeah. when you were trying to rise out, mm -hmm. they kind of yeah. put you back sure. in yeah. a little bit. So like, hey, you should lower your standards yeah. so that we can all be like this. So is that a little bit jealous, you think? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that that's a majority. So he is uh, Jordan Banks. He's starting a new school um, 
in the seventh grade. Okay. And each day he kind of commutes. And then, uh, you know, teachers mm -hmm. are not necessarily used to teaching kids yeah. of color. Yeah. So sometimes they'll confuse the names. Yeah. Sometimes they'll, you know, just all kinds of things. Okay. You know, little microaggressions. Okay. Like okay. But did you feel a little bit uncomfortable? Um, did they make you feel welcome? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, I was really fortunate because I had like four friends from the Bronx, right. you know, all African American, and we were like this, mm. you know. Okay. So for the most part, we just kind of went around our business, right. and you know, ran soft and yeah. were social, right? But you know, we weren't like bullied or harassed That's or good. anything like that. Like there are people that have read the book and said, "Well, that was nice for you, but yeah. this is what happened to me." And I was like, "Well, I'm sorry that happened, yeah. but that wasn't." Right, that's not your story. That's my, my yeah. story, right? right. Very interesting. So, uh, I've, uh, I've known you for a while, yep. uh, and I've known you through a event you co-founded. Yep. Uh, in my opinion, and I, I, I've been doing uh, comic book shows a long time, okay. almost 30 years. And I travel around to big shows near Comic Con and Chicago, but uh, I feel like your Comic Con which is called the Black, right, the, Schaum the Schaum annual Schaumburg's Black Comic Book Festival. Festival. Yep. It's probably the greatest I've ever been to. Oh, as a nice. vendor, as a fan, as a uh, just a attendee, mm -hmm. uh, the vibe I got was just overwhelming. Uh, and uh, so, to, just to give you a little uh, background story, this particular con um, is. Uh, all the all the creators, artists, writers of color in under one roof, right? And they showcase uh, their you know their stuff. Uh, but what got me uh, really stunned was that it was a free event, right? So the the, yeah. the Schomburg, uh Research Center Library mm -hmm. in Harlem. Right. So because it is a public library, right? You know, it's a free event. Mm -hmm. And um, I had done a smaller event, mm -hmm. Black Comic Book Day, right. at Human Bookstore in right. Harlem. Right. And I did a one year, mm -hmm. had like 50 people, right. Marva Allen, who on Human. Right. I was like, wow, this is cool, let's yeah. do it again. Yeah. Next year we had like 150. Yeah. She's like, wow, this yeah. is cool. Yeah. Unfortunately, they closed the doors. Yeah. And then I was looking for another venue. So the second year you hosted it, after that they closed the they doors. They closed, right. So we couldn't keep it there. Mm -hmm. So I had approached the Schomburg mm -hmm. and they put me in touch with Deirdre Holman, right. who was on staff there. Right. She had also been in touch yeah. with John Jennings, right. who wanted to do his Black Kirby mm -hmm. exhibit right. of, of his paintings. Right. And then Dr. Jonathan Gales, mm -hmm. who had wanted to do more of an academic mm -hmm. approach to comics of having okay. like panels, right. and discussions and right. things like that. So she was like, we can't do three events, mm -hmm. but we could do one. Yeah. Why don't you connect with each other? Yes. So we kind of Voltroned up and made one big yeah. super con so that had the panels, that had the exhibit, had the exhibitors, yeah. you know, discussion and the vendors. So that was the origin of how the Schomburg yes. Festival started. Yep. That's, That's our super origin story. Wow. That is. And, and uh, the first year, yeah. I think we had like 500 people, right. which is great. And then next year it's like fifteen hundred, yeah. and then next year it's like five thousand, yeah. and by year four it was like twelve thousand yeah. people. I remember the line that was wrapped around the block. Yeah, it looked yeah. like the yeah. new Avengers movie yeah. was coming out. It was out. unbelievable. Yeah, because the, I guess they had a uh, fire code, so they, they yeah. were clocking people in. Yeah, and they would let people in once a certain amount of people were let in. Right, out. you had to wait for them yeah. to come out, and it's you know February, so it's cold. It is cold. You know, so they, so that's why we um, the next year, maybe year mm -hmm. six right. or so, five or six, we split it into mm -hmm. two days. Mm -hmm. So Friday was more of a kids' day. Oh, okay. So that we actually had uh, kids come in, mm -hmm. like busted school, right? School day, right. and we had different uh, panels and people come in and doing like right. drawing workshops right. and right. discussions for the kids. Yeah. And then once the kids would leave, then, you know, the adults would come in and yeah. then it was just a regular con. Yeah. And then we would do Saturday also. So right. then we got like maybe 4,000 on Friday, maybe right. 8,000 on Saturday. Yeah, that's a great number. Yeah. For such yeah. a small venue. Yeah. And initially, 
you know, I have friends in Philly who were like, should we drive down for this? Right. On the first year, and I was like, dude, I don't know. Like, I don't want you to yeah. drive all right. the way from Philly, right. and there's like 10 people. Yeah. And then the second year, I was like, yeah, come. <laughs> and by year three, people were flying in from yeah. Toronto. Like, yeah. I came all the way to see you with Shindo Kumba. Right, right. You know, is he going to be, like, yeah. yeah, that's it right there. <laughs> you know what, the Nani Relay or David Walker. Or, right, right, right. You know, Keith Knight, people like that. So they yeah. were coming from California, right. Canada, sure. all over. It definitely became a cultural phenomenon. Because as a vendor, I would see people who drove, like I said, from New England, Connecticut. Right. It's like there was a law. Right. And it just, uh, the word got out there. Right. I think pretty much all word of mouth. Yeah, it, it would, well, Schomburg would yeah. blast it, but then you yeah. figure if there's 70 creators, yeah. we're all tweeting and Facebooking right. and right. sharing. Right. Um, but, you know, we set out to change the culture right. of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. One, within our own creative community, because I found that there was always like a certain level of competition. Right. You know, it's like, well, yeah. I got my book yeah. and Hank's got his book, yeah. so we're, we're competing. So he wasn't friendly. I mean, yeah, but probably not behind closed door. Gotcha. So, like in public is friendly, but right. behind closed door, okay. could have been better. Right. So we were like, listen, you know, if someone buys my book, yeah, you know, then and they look at it, wow, look at these kids, though, characters of color, and it's well done, it's yeah. professional. Yeah. What else is out there? Oh, Hank's got a book. Right. It is. Right. And then it's like, wow, this is cool. Wow. What else is there? Oh, Joe's got the book. Right. Let's get Joe's right. book. Right. So then, you know, once you do that, you kind of build sure. the whole yeah. network. You build yeah. like the community. community. Yeah. Right. So that, I think that you would uplift everyone exactly. because now yeah. there's kids looking like, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. No, it doesn't have to be all anime and manga. Right. I got kids that look like yeah. us. Exactly. Like there's a kid named Darius right. in this book. Yeah. And my name is Darius. <laughs> right. You know? And then we also had to kind of teach the fans. Yeah. Uh, one of the good things that yeah. it's a free event right. is that they actually, you know, had money to purchase the book. Exactly. Yeah. And you not, know, not for the admission. <laughs> right. Right. They the, the right. money that they would have spent for admission somewhere right. else, they could actually buy sure. product. Yeah. And teaching them that we need you to actually buy the product. Right. It's not enough to just come and go. Thanks, Hank. Yeah. You know, see you next yeah. year and yeah. walk off and right, right, right. spend ninety dollars on the Xbox game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, look, you need to buy Machado's right. book right. to keep him sure. afloat. Yeah. And the Woods book and, yeah. and you right. know, like that kind you of You have thing. to support the artist. Right. right. Because then they know that they can make yeah. you know, like, wow look, Tuskegee Year. So yeah. all if they don't sell right. out of one, right. They're not gonna print two. Right. Exactly. You know, Regine Sawyer <laughs> and you know, people like that. Sure. You know, Michelin has, mm -hmm. it's like that keeps everyone kind of going. Because it, it is a business at the end of the day. And you know, I mean, uh, as a vendor, the first time I vended there, uh, I, as I said earlier, downstairs, what sh shopping was the, the vibe. Uh, usually when I go to other shows, I get drained. I get yeah. burnt out and I get, you know, I have that 50 hour stare for like a week. Right. You were energized? But when I went to your show, yeah. me and, uh, uh, my uh, associate downstairs, uh, Malcolm. We were whistling. Yeah. We, we could. We had the biggest smile ever, and we couldn't believe how much love there was in this show. Yeah. And 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 not only that, which is something they did something that was unheard of. They catered our lunch. Yeah. Yep. Well, first time I heard about. We gotta it. eat. I started on this. Yeah. Gotta feed us. So what, they said, "Oh, go upstairs and just eat." So we were thinking maybe they had a hot dog or yeah. a pizza. Mm -hmm. They had a, they had a spread. big spread of catered, yeah. you know, gourmet food. Yep. And, you know, a little room to relax. And, was, and then they said, we'll watch a table for you. Right. I'll let you do that. So we were stunned. Yeah. We never been uh, pampered like that as yeah. uh, vendors. And you know? went back to the table and your stuff was still there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That we was didn't, another ball. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, at that point, we didn't care about the stuff. We were like, we felt so pampered as, yeah. you know, uh, you know, uh, and we heard that from a lot of people because, you know, like it, it yes, it was uh, we embraced the independent, right, right, um, because you know not everything is Marvel and DC, right. and, and if Marvel and DC weren't representing us in the way that we needed to, right. 
then you know there's a vision like when I did New Kid, mm -hmm. I hadn't seen a middle grade graphic novel featuring a black kid, right. and I didn't see it, mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, well, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I want to do. So you can't always wait for a Marvel or a DC show to do that. Right. And I'm a Marvel fan, so yeah. I'm not, that's not a knock at all. So yeah. we wanted to, you know, we didn't want to sell mm -hmm. Marvel comics because right. the way that we think sometimes mm -hmm. is, oh, independent, that's nice. Oh, independent, that's, oh, that's yeah. good. Ooh, Black Panther. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get this. Yeah. And you leave and then, sure. you know, right. you don't miss, you know, you don't see they're Gene Sawyer right. and people like that, sure. you know, Stephen yeah. Harris is. Yeah. Um, so it was really a thing where of like, okay, we have to teach you yeah. to support your own. Right. And then, you know, you do the, the product mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, like I said, everything kind of gets better as a result of that. Yeah, I think what you guys created was uh, like a magic. Right? And there was a need. You filled the need. Yeah. Like a, there was a vacuum and you filled it. Yeah. And it just blew up. Yeah. And then since then, I mean, like, David Walker has gotten a chance to right. write some incredible yeah. books. The, uh, Bitter Root, David yeah. Walker became, uh, got picked up by, I believe, Letter Day. Yeah. Yeah. And he did Luke Cage and Power Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, yeah. Luke Cage is Power Man. Mm -hmm. Power Man, I right. guess. Um, Keith right. Knight right. did a book. Um, Jake the Fake. Right. You know. Kerry Randolph. Kerry, right. yeah. His, uh, his new book, Excellence, uh, just got picked up by Amazon. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so there are different people that are, so this is a Harper Collins book, right? you know, and then, so there are different people that are now getting opportunities because when these publishers and editors came yeah. and so 12,000 people, yeah. you know, that's like when the Black Panther movie came sure. out and just rocked, rocked the box office, yeah. they're like, oh, they didn't notice. Yeah. yeah. They're like, whether we like it or yeah. not, it made money oh, and yeah. we want to make money. Yeah. So what else can yeah. we do? So, so publishers were yeah. coming, editors were coming. Yeah. We got interviewed by, you know, like the Fox News came, right. yeah, I remember. NBC yeah. came, yeah. John was doing TV, yeah. I was doing TV, right. radio, newspaper mm -hmm. coverage, right. and it just got better mm -hmm. every year, yeah. you know. So, yeah. so just giving people um, an opportunity to, to shine. So you planted the seed. Yeah. Now you, you're watching all, all these you know, creative that you brought in become successful. So, uh, what would you say is your proudest moment or achievement when you see these creatives in a blow like this? Um, I think one of the proudest is changing the mentalities of some of the moms that came in. Really? Yeah, because we've had moms and grandmas stand up during the panel like yeah. during the q a just tears streaming down yeah thank you so much uh -huh. and my kid doesn't like to read yeah but he read new kid four times wow. or, you know he read Alice in Overland yeah. or you know yeah. or now he wants to listen yeah. and i used to tell him that drawing was stupid the comics were stupid mm -hmm. but thank you so much mm -hmm. like those kind of things which i think is really really cool and then now, perhaps those kids are going to be a next generation of artists. Oh, absolutely. Right, coming up. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And then people like Keith Knight mm -hmm. uh, now has yeah. a show based on his life right. that is on Hulu, I think. It's one of the, the streaming services. Okay. Yeah. Wow. But it's kind of based on his life. So that's kind of cool. So now yeah. you're seeing different things, you yeah, know, definitely. and then people reaching yeah. different plateaus. Right. And then I think your convention has spawned similar events throughout the country, right? Well, you know, there was always yeah. like Ekbok, which is mm -hmm. the East Coast Black Age of Comic Con. Right. So uh, they're in like their, Philly, right? yeah, that's in Philly. They're in like their 16th year. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and then- But uh, that, that one is, it was a great event. And uh, similar uh, creators go there, but it's not as big for some reason. And as far as the amount of people yeah. that come through, yeah. I mean, definitely being in the heart of Harlem. Yeah and with access to public transportation mm -hmm. and just the people just walking yeah. up and down the street that yeah. might not have even known about it. Right. But having the legendary Schomburg yeah. behind it yes. has helped yeah. a lot. But you know, there's yeah. MechaCon and right. you know, uh, yeah. in Atlanta, Joseph Wheeler right. does a great one. Yeah. So there's a lot of, of ones that have been around. Right. 
Um, but this one it has been like, really special. I mean, it's, it's pure genius. Or was it was it you know, a little luck involved that you got Schomburg and everything came together? It was it was really like the best case scenario right. of it was one of those perfect storms where everything just aligned yeah. perfectly. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I guess it was meant to be, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. So uh, would you like to close any of your upcoming or um so so this new kid is up for a Harvey. Harvey, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um, two weeks at New Comic Two weeks and then also the Curtis Award, which okay. is in October. Right. Um, I am hard at work on the sequel to yeah. two. Okay. Which oh, there is a sequel. There is a sequel. Okay. There'll be a two and a three. Okay. Does he does he get older? Um, one year older. So this takes place in seventh grade. Yeah. New Kid Two called Class Act okay. takes place in eighth grade. Okay. And then um, there'll be a third one. Okay. So I handed in the sketches, mm -hmm. the layouts to my editor on Monday, and hopefully I will be done with it by November, December. Oh, okay. And it will be out in say September, October of twenty twenty. Wow. You, you got like no time to rest. Yeah, so I gotta leave here, so I leave out and get my walking tablet and I'm gonna yeah. <laughs> draw and then sleep occasionally. Wow. Okay. So yeah. do, you, do you like draw like full time six days a week, five days a week? Seven days. A week. Seven days. Yeah, I draw. Oh boy. Unless I have to leave do school yeah. visits, but even right. then, like I have a walk a mobile studio, I draw yeah. it on Photoshop. Right. And if I'm on a plane yeah. or a train yeah. or yeah. you know, just hotel room. Just can't stop. I am on a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> this you know, this is what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I'm not gonna get this far yeah. and <laughs> or, you know Carpet tunnel. Yeah, I miss playing the Xbox. Yeah. No, uh, this is yeah. what I wanna do. And you know, seeing the people I've met, yeah, you know. Paul Alexander and Jason mm -hmm. Reynolds and Raina Telgemeier mm -hmm. and these people that, you know, Angie Thomas, right. you know, uh, I tweeted at her. Mm -hmm. I was going to see her at some event. Right. I didn't know her. And right. I was like, hey, um, when I go there, I'm going to yeah. take my copy of The Hate You Give, hope right. that Angie Thomas will sign it. <laughs> and she tweets back, and I'm bringing my copy of New Kid. Yeah. So Jerry Craft will sign that. I'm like, oh. And then you see the tweet I just got a little while from ago. Kobe, right? From Kobe Bryant. Yeah, wow. It's like, hey, congratulations. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah, don't hurt. He's got yeah. 14 million followers. Definitely. You know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, things are things are yeah. lined up. Yeah, definitely. And After um, 30 years of self-publishing. Right. And you pay your dues. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I published the first Mama's yeah. Boys book in 1997. Wow. Yeah. How many Mama's Boys were there? I did three compilations mm -hmm. that were like uh landscape so they were gotcha. like 11 yeah. by eight and a half right and then i turned the last one mama's voice in living color mm -hmm. into a like five by nine oh, okay. um graphic novel gotcha. in full color right so that i could see if i was capable mm -hmm. Of doing a 256 page book because right. that one's only 96 yeah. page right so i figured if i did yeah. that yeah. then i know that i could yeah. do this eventually it would just take sure. three times as long and what a value it's only 12.99 256 pages yeah 12.99 and so that's one of the things as a self-publisher i couldn't do if yeah. i had printed a 256 yeah. page of full color yeah. I would have to charge you a hundred dollars of course <laughs> yeah just right. to recoup the print of course because, you know because yeah that like they, they must be buying it like tremendous bulk. For, yeah, right? absolutely. Bring it, and then, uh, of course, I have to get the cover blur. Funny, sharp, and totally real. Jordan Banks is a kid everyone will be talking about from right. Jeff Kinney, author of Diary of One PK. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. That's great. So, not bad. Yeah. And also, you did a, you made a little uh, comment for uh, last week's guest, yes. Michael Northrup. Michael Northrup yeah. uh, wrote Dear Justice Lee. Yeah. He and I used we worked together at Sports Illustrated for kids right. for eight years. Right. And he called me during the summer and asked if yeah. I could blur his book. Wow. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> but then I, I was like, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So yeah, I'm on the back of his book, which is yeah. pretty cool. So your post yeah. downstairs has both of us. Right. Yeah, I know that guy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. What a small world. Yeah. Yeah. Now Absolutely. he owes you one. Though. He definitely <laughs> owes you one. Absolutely.